coming in quickly because um, I just finished up the Prada beauty campaign that I have to do. Um, and I just wanted to quickly talk through some of the colors. I got the new Hyper Matte lipsticks and I'm actually very, very pleased with the colors because sometimes a lot of the pink colors that um, come out from these beauty companies don't really work with all of the melanated skin tones. Sometimes they look a little ashy, sometimes just an unnatural pink. But I do feel like all three of these colors are really good like natural everyday pinks they look like your natural lip color I feel like these colors would work really well with most melanated skin tones um i think they work pretty well with mine I, I did have to line my lips with a darker pencil just so it wasn't too bright on my lips brown nude um we have like a medium pink and then a light pink i also did get their dimensions multi-use eyeshadow palette um you can use it for highlighters your classic eyeshadow um even a little bronzing effect um so there's multiple uses for this um i mainly worked with the magenta color here and then the two lighter more shimmery bronzy nudes i'm more of a eyeliner mascara and i'm good to go I don't really do too much with the eyeshadows, but I really can see myself trying out these lipsticks. Once you pair your favorite lip liner with one of these colors in one of these lipsticks, you'll be good to go. You'll find your everyday lip combo. I promise you. I wanted to put y'all on to something real quick. If you're looking for a good classic tee just to lounge around in for the spring, for the summer, um, that's lightweight, good quality that you can kind of put on for like lounging or if you just have a really simple like cute outfit that you want to wear. These men's uh, classic crew neck t-shirts from Goodfellow that you can get at Target. Excellent. I got them in a size small um in white and black like literally they're not lying it's the perfect cotton classic crew neck shirt small does fit a little oversized but it's still a good um fit but yeah i'm gonna be living in these for spring and summer especially once it gets hot outside um there's a lot of breathability in this fabric um it's not super thick um and then i do like how the black is more of a richer truer black it's not super washed out it washed down um which is nice it's another quick gem that i did find in target um so yeah i would highly highly recommend those so important update we finally got a couch in the living room and i love it i am so excited to show it to you guys this has been a labor of love. I have looked everywhere for the couch that I wanted. And I think I finally found the right one. I wanted something that was definitely not so rectangular, so square. I wanted something with a curve. I wanted something that's unique, that stands out, that kind of captivates the room. I wanted just honestly a good starting point for my living room decor to kind of base everything else off of it. And I think this is a good centerpiece to begin with. So without further ado, the couch.
couch. It is a curved tufted lounge chair. I wanted it to fit within this window here so I couldn't go too big. And I'm happy with the size of it. It can fit two people comfortably. And it came with these cute little round pillows, which I love. I think they accent the shape really well. It's super comfy. It's velvet. It has enough of a spring inside. So yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm so happy that I looked further so I could find this one. So this isn't the only seating area or arrangement that I want to have in this area. Um, I want to put another accent chair probably over here. And then I probably will move this acrylic Ikea chair into my closet for now. And then put another accent chair or ottoman or something there. And then have, of course, my coffee table. And then um, my bookshelf, display shelf on this wall. Um, and I want to follow that pink lighting design that I showed in my last video. Um, so that's what the plan is for now. But definitely going to add more seating. I know this one is a little bit smaller, but I definitely think it packs a little bit of a punch in this space. But we're definitely going to have more seating to come. We are getting there. We are finally getting there and we're going to get this living room together. have my projector coming today the projector stand should be coming I think tomorrow so I can finally like watch things in my living room which will be great I'm so excited to see how that will be set up I also have a lot of content to go ahead and get started on I have five brand collaborations that I need to do stuff for that all came in within the past I would say a month which is really good, very good for me. I'm glad that these brands are reaching out, um, especially some of the major ones. Um, some brands are circling back and wanting to work with me again. So all exciting news. Definitely happy that all of these opportunities are coming in. I definitely think that adding the YouTube platform to all of my other social media platforms definitely helped with expanding my audience and just showing brands that I can capture an audience with long-form content. Um, I think that's still important. So if you are a content creator out there and you were debating on starting YouTube, I think now is a great time to do it. Um, and kind of just building your rhythm, building your creativity with long-form content and, you know, trying to um, expose yourself on this platform. Um, so yes. So the first project that I need to work on is with Prada Beauty. Um, and then I have SK2, Marc Jacobs again, um, Gap, and I just finished something with Coke, which is very exciting. So, yes. So March has honestly been pretty good. I'm closing out Q1 on a high note. Um, definitely am looking forward to what April has to bring. We're going to keep it going, keep it rolling, keep the opportunities coming, keep the blessings pouring in. I'll show the final products for each of the campaigns. Those are all the updates that I have right now. Um, let me go get started.
we did get a little special package in today too. We got our Cowboy Carter merch. Oh, I wanted this shirt so bad. Like out of all the options, I needed the, the red ringer tee. Like it's so cute. And I love this graphic. I got a size small in the ringer tee um, and it has the Cowboy Carter graphic in the front and then Act 2 and Cowboy Carter at the back. You know we have to style it and I already have a look planned and laid out so we'll go through that next. But I really need the Beyonce Parkwood merch team to really go ham with all the graphics for this album, for this era. Because there's so much good imagery and I need it on more merch. Like the little graphic of her like waving for the Texas Hold'em release. The little animated cartoon pinup thing. Like, can we get that on a shirt? Honestly, my ideal like merch concept would be to put that Texas Hold'em cartoon pinup graphic on the back of like a leather jacket, a la the 90s Yohi Yamamoto pinup leather jackets that he used to do. Like that would be so excellent. Just do some really nice exclusive merch based around this album because the imagery is just so good. It's just so impactful to me that I need it on more than just a few t-shirts, if you get what I'm saying. But that's just my opinion. But so far, I think it's cute. I got the box with um, this tee and the CD. I don't know what I'm going to do with a CD in 2024 but it came with the shirt so we have that so, so let's get into this outfit and go ahead and style it because what are we waiting for so we have the ringer tee and I was thinking about pairing the Cowboy Carter shirt with these leather pants from Takara Wong which is a indie brand based out of Bangkok I got these pants ooh. I want to say like 2017. I found them at um, this store called The Doors in Soho um, and they just house like different small emerging designers and indie brands all across the world. A lot of New York based designers like will put their stuff in The Doors first um, if you're just starting out. Um, so there's really cool things there you can find. And I thought these would work perfectly because of course if you're gonna go Western, Cowboy, Southern, all of it, you need some leather. And we got some leather. It also ties into the whole red ringer detail with the embroidery right at the knee in red. So I like that little call out. Um, it says beautiful derelict. So these are like right at the knees, which I think are really cool. Um, so I think that will work. We'll do that. And for the shoes, I feel like if we're going to do Cowboy Carter all the way up to its full potential, to its full aesthetic, then... The shoes have to be on point. And I figured I might as well pull out my Daidu little hook heels. So when I first thought of these shoes, I thought of that one image that she has where she kind of has that um, one snake little shape on the lens of her uh, sunglasses. And I thought that tied in perfectly with these Daidu heels because something about the hook heel does give a little bit of a snake reptile effect so I think we'll do these and then also we have the little pop of red and of course we couldn't forget about the cowboy hat so I have my um classic cowboy hat from Tebe Magugu one of my favorite favorite designers at the moment um he is based out of South Africa Johannesburg and he's amazing and this is one of his classic cowboy hat silhouettes. He did a whole collection a few years ago that was based off of um, African and Americana and Western sort of themes. And he featured these cowboy hats that came in like a multitude of different colors. And it features his logo and this little silver emblem in the front. One of my favorite things about this hat is definitely the shape. You get that little dimple and that dent at the top. So it's that sharp little flat shape at the front and then once you turn to the side it has that classic cowboy hat dimple and for the shape of the brim it definitely has those peaks where it curves up which I love that to me is a marker of a really well designed cowboy hat if you can see all those little elements
be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! Don't be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! Don't be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! Don't be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! Don't be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! Don't be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! Don't be a bitch, come take it to the flow now. Woo! So I realized we did all of this Cowboy Carter talk and I didn't even debrief the album at all or talk about my thoughts. So that's what I want to do now, um, talk about my initial thoughts and I really want to see what other people have to say about it. Um, I mean, it's been all positive things that I've seen and I think people are really connecting with it. It did take me a few listens to kind of really grasp what was going on. I love how cinematic and epic the whole soundscape is of this album it definitely gives movie soundtrack it definitely gives a score of like you know an oscar winning film honestly i love the lyrics i think the lyrics are a little bit deeper than what we've kind of have seen from her um so i do love those two aspects my initial question after I did listen to it a few times over the weekend, I was like, what is my takeaway going to be from this album? Or what am I supposed to feel? Or what does she want us to feel at the end of this listening experience? And that I feel like I'm still trying to figure out because I feel like with Renaissance, that one just like hit me over the head immediately. Like after like by Alien Superstar, I was like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to feel with this album. I feel like Renaissance definitely hit me a lot harder when I listened to it the first time um, and I completely understood what the overall goal was um, from the aspect of um, a listener or as a fan and I got what the intention was and I got that this was an album that was for everybody for the masses it wasn't just for a specific group and it truly felt like a universal experience and the moment felt like it was for everybody. It was a feel good time. It was definitely feel good. Another reason why Renaissance hit me a lot harder is because that album to me was like full of just affirmations all the way through top to bottom. Like if I was having a stressful day or work was getting like hard or whatever, I would listen to Alien Superstar on loop and be good. So I think the difference that I see in Cowboy Carter is that this is more of a easy listening observational experience versus renaissance is more of a album that calls for action if that makes sense like this is definitely something you listen to when you have that time to kind of reflect observe i know people are saying that like it's great for like road trips or like travel and just really need time to sit with this one and to fully grasp what's going on and what she's trying to accomplish versus renaissance like that one just called for like action like that's just, that's what you put on when you're ready to go like, and going back to my earlier point about renaissance being more for the masses and kind of like an album for everybody i feel like this one is definitely a selfish album in the best way possible because you can tell that it really wasn't or the intention really wasn't to kind of hit everybody or hit everybody the same way it was definitely something that was more of a point of study and reference and research for her which i think is very cool i think that lemonade was also sort of that research reference point too but that one definitely had more of a commercialized strategy or goal in mind compared to this one i don't think they went into cowboy carter with the goal of like hitting metrics or you know getting like a ton of like top 40 hits i don't think that's what the intention was with this one and i say that this is more of a selfish album because you can tell that this was more of a personal study of her texas roots southern roots the history of it even some of the references that she uses to the history of black entertainment and the arts like you can tell that this was this was definitely something that where you had to like 
have time to sit with and to conceptualize and, you know, to produce. Other criticism that I have is that I do think the features, like the standalone features, could have been better utilized. And I love the song with Miley Cyrus. I think Miley Cyrus did her thing. I think she sounds great. They sound great together. And it's a beautiful song. But I would have loved to have heard some other people on that song. I think someone with more of a gospel-y, soulful tone would have probably hit harder for me. So I, I'm still a little surprised at the choice of collaborating with Miley Cyrus. I don't think it was a bad choice. I think it was a good choice. Like the song's gonna do well. But I think I probably would have wanted a few more people above that. Like I don't, yeah. Yeah. Um, same thing with Post Malone. Love the song. The song sounds great. He sounds amazing on it. I didn't know he could sing like that. But even with him, I was like, okay, it's, it's a cute song. But once again, I wanted that more like grassroots soul country like folk vocal on there like i don't get why chris stapleton wasn't called into the room luke combs even after like fast car and that like his cover like why wasn't he called or even like if they had like john batiste feature on there samo is great like there was a few people that probably i would have considered before post malone but once again the song's gonna do well i just think other people could have been utilized and could have had that spot but eh, whatever going back to the features i think that some of the references that she makes in this album and some of the imagery like referencing the chitlin circuit i think that she's trying to do like a positive flip on that term given the history of it and the fact that that's still used as a derogatory term when it comes to certain performers and where they play and perform um so i get the flip of it but i do think that she probably should have considered who she featured throughout the album heavily if you were going to heavily reference a chitlin circuit and that era was specifically for black performers and black artists to get their just do on stage and to get their shine and get opportunities in the arts and entertainment um, and to build their fan base. I think we probably could have considered changing up the features then if you're gonna keep referencing the Chitlin circuit. I don't think that aligns with the, the Miley Cyruses and the Post Malones. I did enjoy it. I think that it is a massive step forward for her art and her trajectory um yeah I'm still kind of figuring out what my end feelings are about this album I love it I really do love it um but I'm still trying to figure out what I'm supposed to feel at the end of it or what she wants the audience to feel at the end of it beyond it just being like something really nice to listen to sonically um I'm gonna tell you which ones are the ones though let me see. Bodyguard, that needs to be on somebody's commercial, somebody's movie. Like, that's a perfect song. Um, I do like the Jolene flip. I like the end of Jolene with the choir the best. Um, the lyrics are like, okay, whatever. Um, but I like Jolene. Daughter is great. That needs to be on someone's movie soundtrack, too. It's so weird. It's so, like, eerie, and I love it um just for fun is nice most wanted love that one levi jeans is cute flamenco i like a lot oh my rose is pretty too but those are like the interludes the interludes i feel like could have been full songs if you're gonna do 27 songs give us 27 songs um yaya perfect i think that's one of beyonce's best songs in my opinion that might be in my top five of Beyonce songs ever because I think that just embodies literally her whole history of performance and her inspirations all in one. Like that's a perfect song. Um, Desert Eagle is great, should be longer. Riverdance is cute. I like Riverdance. It's not my favorite bop on this album, but it's cute. Yeah, it's like, it's, I'm like here with it. Two Hands to Heaven, I like that one, that was nice. The end, once again, the end is one of my favorite parts with like the choir you know what i think i like 
a lot of the gospel elements that she used in this album a lot and that's why I'm gravitating towards those moments in some of the songs so I feel like that could have been utilized more throughout the whole song Tyrant I don't know how anybody came up with that that is a standout song to me Tyrant is so good I I just so good Sweet Honey Buckin I like it. I like sweet and honey. Buckin, Buckin's a chop for me. It's whatever. Honey though, that little 30 seconds of honey, so good. I really like, I need a B-sides of this album because honey needs to be a full song. That little snippet is just perfection. And Amen is also a good closer. And once again, I love, and once again, I love Amen because they bring in the choir. Same with American Requiem. An American Requiem is also a fabulous opener. I think my favorite openers from her are probably Pray You Catch Me and now American Requiem. But those are my favorites. Oh, Spaghetti's an absolute chop. I, no, no. Spaghetti's corny. Sorry, but Spaghetti's corny to me. I can't, I can't do it. Mm -mm. Those are my final thoughts. Um, a lot of Beyonce talk in this video, huh? Yeah. Whatever, we're in the new era. We have to talk about it. Um, let me know what your favorite thoughts are, what you think about this whole Cowboy Carter era. I'm interested to see other people's opinions on it. to show and talk about things and then when I um, edit I realized I missed so many talking points and didn't show the new things that I got um, so that's why I'm back here and I wanted to show these little beauties here mm-hmm I know they look familiar you probably seen them so cute just just a cute easy shoe love it so I'm not normally a dupe girly I don't think there's anything wrong with duping I don't think you're a horrible person if you <laughs> decide to buy a dupe um, given the right circumstances of who you're biting off of um, but it's not something that I like to do often or frequent um, but when the time calls for it, when the dupe is good, I don't mind dipping my toe in those waters. And the time came to to get these. So, so these are the Alaya Crystal Embellished Mary Jane Flats. Um, and the dupe I got from Amazon, $69. And it's a really good dupe. I think they, they, did, they did what they needed to do with this one. And I inspected it to the images and videos of the Alaya um, Mary Jane and it's pretty close. I mean, of course, you'll have some defects and some quality issues. Um, but for the most part, I think visually they kind of capture the same essence of it. I and Mary Jane's are over $1,200 for some flats and I who's who's doing that? No one's doing that. I'll pop in a little video that I did wearing them. And I think these are so cute for spring and summer. I love the way Rihanna wore them with like sweats and just like casual like running around outfits. If you're like running to Target or Trader Joe's, instead of doing like a Birkenstock or a regular slide or um, I don't know, sneakers, just pop on some crystal Mary Janes with your little jogger set. That's cute. <laughs>